Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller along with Robert Glasscock. We got a listener question from our speak pipe on the funastrology.com website that really touched my heart because I could hear a young Thomas inside this question. Hi, Thomas. My name is Annette from Denver. Longtime listener. I absolutely love what you're doing. I love all of the effort and knowledge you're giving us. My question is about planets and detriment in our natal chart. So how do we find growth from uncomfortable positionings that keep recurring over and over again. For example, I am a Cancer Sun and I have uh, my ascendant as Cancer. And then I got good old Mars there, one degree away from my Sun, like 28, 29 degrees. And it's just causing so much fun. <laughs> I don't think I've integrated it. And I know a lot of us have other interesting aspects, squares, whatnot, things to reconcile. Uh, maybe this is a broad question, but you've done a lot of self-work yourself. Where did you start? Thank you so much. I can't wait to hear what you say. Love what you do. So, Robert, when I said I could hear a young Thomas inside this question, first of all, I hear the sincerity in Annette's voice. You know, it just comes through. But what she's describing is an aspect that I have. So we're going to put my chart in the show notes. And if you look over at the fifth house, you will see my 666 in Scorpio. And one of uh, two of those planets are the Sun and Mars, exactly what Annette was describing. Now, hers are in Cancer. So we're going to focus on hers in Cancer. And she said, she didn't say which is which, but 28 and 29 degrees. And she's a Cancer rising. So obviously this is in the first house somewhere. Why don't you uh, help Annette at least understand what dynamics she's dealing with there astrologically, and then we're going to talk about difficult aspects in general. So this isn't just going to be for Annette. This is going to be for all of us. But for people that are feeling a strong Mars in their chart, the god of war, how do you advise them astrologically? Well, her question really was about Mars in detriment in cancer. It wasn't about Mars. Interestingly enough, because your Mars is in its home sign of Scorpio. That's a completely different Mars than hers in Cancer. Her Mars in Cancer, and she's right because she is a Cancerian sun and ascendant. And she has Mars conjunct her sun. Both of those, Mars and the sun, are masculine archetypes, males. But she's a woman. And yet... She's incarnated to live out masculine archetypes of Mars, assertiveness, for example, ambition, for example, desire, for example, action, for example. Those are all Mars archetypes. Traditionally, we're talking character. And she's a woman. So automatic. Now, Mars is said to be, she said, detriment. Mars is actually in its fall in Cancer. Its exaltation is in Capricorn because Capricorn helps control the Mars energy and focus it in a career or an organized expression of Mars action and ambition. That's the exaltation. But Mars in Cancer is opposite that. Mars in Cancer operates in the realm of the home, and the family, and the emotions, and security. And those are all, in, in Cancer, Mars operates irrationally, emotionally, as opposed to in Capricorn, where, where it acts rationally, and with focus and control and discipline and training and so on. In in Cancer, Mars is not only detrimented, it is, it's in its fall, because it tends to indicate knowing nothing else about the horoscope of the person, a volatile emotional nature since birth, starting with the birth family, so that the Mars archetype in the chart will be active at birth, and it will run throughout the whole family. Now, if that can be good. If you come from a family, let's say like the Kennedy family, who are all driven to compete and to excel and to make something of themselves, 
Uh, many of them were neurotic as hell and they wound up alcoholics and had marital problems and all the rest of it. But that was still that Mars archetype that was ingrained in that whole family dynamic. So with, with her, if it's unconscious that Mars in Cancer can ultimately upset her emotional and relationship and marital and even family stability and its security. If she's conscious, on the other hand, and aware and awake through astrology, she can look at her own family dynamic objectively and see where it might be troublesome or even violent or unstable etc etc for clues as to her own expression of her mars in her life because at the same time mars in cancer usually does give a strong desire to have a secure home and a secure family but all of its life if it's unconscious it will feel insecure and desperately needy if it's unconscious and therefore mars is at its fall in this sign it will express unconsciously neediness it will cover its neediness with a really hard exterior it'll be it'll have a shell just like a crab does as far as seeming to be a lot more brittle and witty and carefree and yada yada than it really is because it's very sensitive and very vulnerable especially to hurt and so it 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 is prefigured just at birth to experience some emotional hurt and and pain because of that and once it gets a handle on its own real drives and ambitions then it, it it can turn out to be be the archetype of self-fulfillment but it usually is it's tough in her chart because it means really if she finds a work and career identity for herself that really satisfies her needs shown through her moon sign which rules all those the ascended sun and mars through her moon sign its placement and so on if she follows her bliss in other words and and goes after a career and whatever it takes to to achieve the level she wants to in that career then those avenues will take up that mars energy in cancer and through pursuing a kind of self-defined career for herself which will take a lot of work through through pursuing that she will ultimately or can find the mate and therefore the children and so on that she truly desires. If she places the love and marriage first, which is usually a tendency with Mars in a woman's chart like this, she'll think, all right, I can find my identity through a man and through marriage and a children. I'm going to be a wife and a mother, and I want to be somebody's wife, not just any average Joe. I want somebody. But if she's young when she marries and the hormones are going, and then suddenly she finds herself young with a family and a husband and no real education or job career it's a whole different kind of life so those are the kinds of considerations i guess with that mars now your mars is at its home sign in scorpio so this is a nat and along with your neptune and the sun so what you're doing right now in your life and as far as much as i've known about you you always have done is the idea of children were absolutely important key for you to have you've had them so are creative and metaphysical mars and neptune children to have and this is where the deeper it's it's one thing to make biological babies it's another one to then be responsible for them as they grow up but a lot of that's biological the creative children that you are giving birth to at this time in your life are a different kind of children and that's where you're focusing. So this Mars that you have in Scorpio, it's in its home sign. It's one of the best places it can be. And so it gives you the drive and the curiosity to go deeply into life, to find out the secrets of life, Scorpio, the secrets of death and transformation and rebirth and God, even the secret of God, the secret of all that is. That's where you're 
search is that that's where your life is taking you at this point that's a completely different mars in scorpio because you are effectively transforming yourself you already have you're transforming yourself and everybody who listens to you and the work that you do in the media and so on. This is tremendously creative and really transformative work. I hate using that cliche, but it sure applies here because you're helping us and people out here who listen to you transform their understanding of astrology or their understanding of themselves in a very constructive way. Well, and I keep joking with you, you're like a minister which you could have been and been very effective. I was on but that you're path, on a high, yeah. but you and you're doing the same thing, but it's on a more universal and a deeper level. You see what I mean? I, I do, but I will tell you, I did not escape the shadow side of this triple conjunction. And that is basically all documented in my Subconscious Mind Mastery podcast, where you begin at episode number one, when a minister pointed his finger at me, a guy that I looked up to as a teenager, I wanted to be him when I decided to go to the ministry. And he looked at me and he said, you are the greatest disappointment in my ministry because I didn't go to seminary. And that began my subconscious programming that carried through my adult life. And that subconscious mind mastery podcast is over 300 episodes of that journey of coming back. And that's why Annette reached out, because you're talking about, of course, the other ruler of Scorpio is Pluto, and that does represent transformation. And I've got to say, I mean, I own my transformation, and I'm quite, in a very healthy way, proud of it because I found my chart. And I think that's what Annette is asking here. She's saying that she still hasn't, I, I love her words, I still haven't integrated that, means she's working on it but she's looking for other clues in order to solve the dilemma of that Mars. And I did do a subconscious mind mastery podcast on this question and talked a lot about my journey in the shadow side of this aspect as well. If I may, Thomas, I just want to, before you close this out, point out a couple of things. One is you have Pluto, which is also Scorpio's square, or no, I'm sorry, it's it's sextile. sextile yeah, your uh, your your Scorpio transformative process. It's also interesting to me with that sextile that the the that minister saying that to you absolutely was probably up until that point or, or at that point the most important thing that was ever said to you because it was the moment where you confronted all right do i believe in god or this minister and are they the same thing because he's telling me the word of god and i'm not following it i'm his biggest disappointment have i disappointed god or have i disappointed this religion and are they the same thing? That's what happened. And you began to realize that there is a difference between knowing God personally and knowing God secondhand through a man-made religion that says it is the word of God, but of course can never prove that. It might be the word of God, or it might not be. But you will never know because that can never be proved. What can be proved is your relationship with God. And that is something that happens inside you. It's personal. It's Matthew 6, 6. If you want to go to Christianity, go into the closet and shut the door behind you and pray to your father in heaven in private, and he'll reward you publicly. But that's not religion. And so you learned in that moment that you had a choice of either going with God inside you or going with God inside this minister. And that's the choice that everybody has to make, really. And so, so that was a profound choice. And it came through your third house. It was said to you by this minister, third house kind of thing. Basically, he, he was telling you, you won't follow orders. And that's what Pluto over, uh, over the, the sun actually can be, is following orders. You didn't conform to his and there, by extension, the religion's definition of you. And so that was the moment where you died to that, and you were simultaneously reborn to what you're doing now. 
I think. And in her case, her identity with with Mars rising, let's say Mars around the ascendant in Cancer, the good side of that is owning that position. She's all about security and a home and a family and property. So one of the first things you could say, I don't know what her background is or education, she would make one hell of a real estate agent, for example. And everybody thinks, oh, that's all about money. It isn't. It's about fi- listening to clients, people families or sometimes commercial entities talk about what their needs are for a a property or a home, a residence or a warehouse or whatever it is, commercial building, their need for an environment in which they can thrive as families or individuals or as business. So she puts together then, it's almost like feng shui. Real estate can be very spiritual in this way. She's putting together an individual or a family or a company with an environment at the price point that they want, but that in which they will thrive. And she's showing these properties to these people who walk in and in a few seconds know whether they're interested or not. So it really sells itself. But what she's doing is trying to provide a healthy environment at the price point that that somebody wants that will help them thrive. So it has a spiritual component to it. And it's also very much Mars in cancer, the idea of home and property and real estate and investments through those things. That's just one positive indication of her so-called Mars in its fall in cancer. If she owns it and becomes conscious of it and begins to express it consciously and directed toward things that she really does desire, Mars, then she will find self-fulfillment and through that everybody around her a husband children friends will feel more fulfilled too i wanted to thank you a minute ago for acknowledging that transformation in my own life and to be honest with you i dumb luck fell into it because i sat there in an rv in 2009 after my second divorce saying to myself you cannot keep living like this And that's what began the change. It's all documented in the other podcast. What I'd like to ask on behalf of Annette and others who have difficult aspects in their charts, and they know that they have a Sun-Saturn aspect or a Pluto-Neptune aspect or something that in the old books you would shudder and say, don't leave your house, (laughs) you know, stay inside the rest of your life. When people have tough aspects and they would say, like Annette said, I haven't fully integrated it yet, what advice would you give to them? Oh, man, you know, I'm still looking and stuck on your chart and your transformation, but it's the same for Annette in a lot of ways, and it has been for me as well. I don't know. I never expected this to come out of astrology, but it has indirectly the direct experience of God. Or the all that is, as the Seth books put it, which is, for a lot of people, a more comfortable word phrase than God is. But that's what it is, is learning what that means, the direct experience of God. And in your chart, you have that Pluto square, your Jupiter and Mercury in Sagittarius, as you know. And that is religion. Jupiter is religion. Sagittarius is religion. And I'm talking about man-made religions, Judaism. Christianity, Islam, the three Abrahamic religions, but they're all man-made. Buddhism is man-made because they are all attempts to describe God for other people. But at the same time, they they may have originally been revelations on the part of some man or a woman who said, oh, God just spoke to me. Here's the word. But the point is, we're all born with this direct connection to begin with. And look at the forces that try to prevent you from discovering it for yourself. That's crazy. How do you know that? You're hearing voices. So you are conditioned by fear of ultimate judgment, fear of hellfire and damnation to discover this connection for yourself. Because once you do, you don't need a church or a minister, or a book, or a ritual, or a group to define your relationship with God. It's there all the time for you, all the time. And that's what you're on the path, and that's what you've discovered. And that was the big, that in the moment, though, it activated everything in that Pluto sextile your Scorpio planets plus the square to your Jupiter. That was when you thought, all right, I've got to find the truth for myself because this isn't it. 
I don't care about his judgment of me. But I want to spread a message. I want to spread the truth. And that's the square from your Mar from your Pluto to your Jupiter Mercury. So what you have done is discovered a deeper truth, which is that something like astrology, it's not the be all and end all, but boy, is it a gateway of a door into a world inside of you and outside of you that suggests that somehow you as a person and the planets and the sun and the moon and the signs, the solar system are the same thing, just on vastly different scales, but that, that you are a part of God and that that can be known and can be appreciated and loved. You know, it's interesting because when I started that transformation in 2009, I had never looked at an astrology chart. And somewhere along that year, I just decided to look at it because I was whiteboarding everything. I was discovering anything new. And I thought, you know, astrology, all I knew that it was I was a Scorpio. That's all I knew. And that it was of the devil. Those two things I knew about astrology. Mm, 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 and I had never looked in the chart. And yet that chart unfolded in that transformation began that year. So yeah. one of the things I would say to Annette is, and I said this actually in the other podcast, maybe you would agree, keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep asking for the next clue. Yes, yes. Another thing that I do is I constantly am reminding myself in astrology, there are two sides to every coin. That's I got yes, that sir. from Steve Forrest narrating that Elements series yes, on sir. audio. He says it over and over. There are two sides of the coin. And I always keep that in mind when I'm thinking about these archetypes. And I would ask, if I were Annette and I were asking for the next steps, I would ask for them to be easy and benefic. To just say, I am open and, learn and willing to uh, work on any area of my life shown to me without resistance. Just show me in an easy way. <laughs> well, you know, Thomas, with the Nets chart, again, see, I love this discussion. She's talking about Mars and Cancer in its fall. The irony of that, because of Mars' placement in Cancer with her son and her son, this woman, knowing nothing else about her chart, would make a wonderful therapist, especially a marriage and family and child counselor for example, as a career, what would it demand? It would, first of all, demand higher education on her part to get the degrees necessary for the licenses and so on to practice. And that alone takes a certain amount of Saturnian discipline and dedication and also love of the field. So if she were even remotely interested in this sort of thing, I would encourage her because real estate's a, a tangible way to go. Child psychology, marriage and family counseling, and that sort of thing, Mars and Cancer is ideal for that because she's been through it in her life. She knows family dysfunctions and she has healed herself and is in the process of healing herself because she's into astrology. It's a form of amateur therapy, if you will. It can be developed to a very high level, but it is still not psychotherapy. But boy, can it be an asset so with her, that's another thing that she can do constructively because the idea, the archetype, Mars rising basically and around her ascendant in, in Cancer says, own your Mars archetype, own your Mars in Cancer archetype. What does that mean? It means own your own power, own your own ambition, own your own sense of direction. If you can, now if you got married and had a family young, that's going to define you. And within that construct, now you have to work. They come first, but boy, second does a career for you. Well, I don't have time for a career. Figure it out. Figure it out. Keep working on it. Because if you can turn that Mars and Cancer into the focus of a career, like real estate, like child or marriage and family, child counseling, those sorts of things, uh, you'll be fine. Well, and I know that she is in our Fun Astrology 101 course, so she is learning astrology, and whatever she does, I imagine, will be a part of that. Well, thank you so much. This is a great conversation. I know we could go on and on, but we need to 
cut it off here, but we'll continue this discussion in other episodes. If you would like to talk to Robert, Annette, I would highly advise that, by the way. <laughs> you can get him by the direct link at our show notes. My chart is in there because we've discussed it in this episode and all the other goodies that we typically talk about at the end of the show. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you back next time on the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock.